this is nice. Why I say nice? Because we don't fall under the first schedule. Do you think it's nice? You want me to discuss in an open video like this? Or you want to discuss with the DOE? that you have the law book with you while checking this video out have fun assalamualaikum let us continue the interpretation of the clean air regulations 2014 this particular special slide and i call it the google map to guide you how to go into this law which door should we take please make sure you know which part of this particular law that applies all right Find yourself time to look at the diagram. I want you to pay attention at this question. Who? What sort of industry are we? Regulation 13. The first question is to ask whether we are subscribing to this particular first schedule. Industries listed in the first schedule, their standard is here. Third schedule. So now we have to identify, are we in the first schedule of industries? Or not? I hope that's clear. That's the first question we have to ask before we look at other industry which are not in the first schedule. We got to look at this one, fuel burning equipment. The big type of fuel burning equipment the big type of genset boiler furnace oven burner and all this because why when they are big they have standard to comply watch if they are burning solid fuel more than 30 kilogram bar mass power it's mass per time it is loading okay wood chips sawdust fiber or even garbage coal clinker tires these are all solid fuel if that burner is using solid fuel equals to or more than 30 kilogram per hour then they are considered to be big and if they use other kinds of fuel like liquid or gas fuel liquid fuel like light fuel oil medium fuel oil heavy fuel oil or diesel or even petrol or paraffin methanol butanol all this liquid fuel or even gas fuel like natural gas liquid Liquid petroleum gas at a rate of 15 kilogram per hour or more than they are considered big fuel burning equipment. They are subscribing to second schedule in terms of number one, the sulfur content, number two, the emission. When they are big fuel burning equipment, the fuel quality, the quality of solid liquid and gas fuel is being regulated by this law. And in fact, the emission from the stack chimney of such equipment is already stipulated under second schedule. Don't have to refer elsewhere. Other industries which doesn't appear in the first schedule and they don't have huge fuel burning equipment, automatically their emission standard is by the fourth schedule and the fifth schedule. The fourth schedule is about dioxin and furan and the fifth schedule is about hazardous emission. This is the Google map. None of the industry is being left out in this regulation and the parameters are really tailored to the type of industry. I hope you are able to 
comprehend the fact that it is a double standard. Certain industries are grouped as first schedule, certain others are not. Why is it like that? Simple reason. In the first schedule, most of these industries are well organized and normally they occupy gazetted, heavy industrial areas and they are much easier to control. In fact, the industrial area is also well managed, well planned. The issue is industry is occupying or listed as first schedule but they have smaller say burner how do we make of that the law has got clause simple phrase at the rear end of the, the legal statement as the case may be do you find it although they have got smaller burner or oven or furnace the emission standard still needs to follow second schedule and Third schedule by virtue of the fact that they are situated in an industry which is first schedule. What about if the industry is other industries but they got big boiler, they got big genset? Then the big boiler and big genset easy. They are subscribing to second schedule, as you can see. And these other industries, they are already subscribing to fourth schedule and fifth schedule. Another example is the industry is other industry not listed in the first schedule and they just use a small boiler or genset or oven. Then the boiler, genset and oven, the smaller version, not the big type, will have to comply to fourth schedule and fifth schedule. And that particular industrial operation, the emission of air pollutant from their respective processes also has got to conform to or subscribing to fourth and fifth schedule. I will give you an illustration. Uh, berhubung dengan uh, summary illustration. So what you see here, kilang ni berada dekat now, dalam first schedule, nampak? fugitive emission is uh, regulated under second schedule. That fugitive emission are those uh, released not able to be contained. It is released as fugitive emission. And there are some point source emission from processes. And those processes that releases non-methane volatile organic compound through LEV and exhaust or ventilation or opening, whatever you call it. It could be ventilation ducting. It could be, could be ventilation conduit pressure relief uh, outlet. Then their standard is in its second schedule. For their main process, if they are power generation plant, then the point source emission shall be looking at third schedule. If they are uh, a ferrous, a smelter, then the emission shall follow what is stipulated for furnace under third schedule. And if that is an incinerator, then what is emitted through the chimney of those incinerator is stipulated in third schedule. If that activity is iron and steel mill, then the furnace emission shall be complying to third schedule as stipulated for a steel mill. Metal foundry, petrochemical plant, if it's an oil and gas refinery, then the emission has got its individual specific limits of emission under the third schedule. It's not difficult, isn't it? This is very straightforward, very clear. Assuming this is a pop and pay processes, okay? The emission from that process shall comply to third schedule. Source specific, activity specific, process specific. That is what third schedule is about. If they have a genset, which is small, not even 15, small, but this equipment, burner, genset, or thermal oil heater is residing, is installed in a facility or a factory which is listed in the first schedule that that genset operation got to comply to the second schedule. The fuel is controlled and the emission into the air is controlled under the second schedule. Are you alright? Okay. Can we go to the second scenario? This is the first scenario. Scenario clear cut. What is different now? This activity are those activities listed in the first schedule? There is a finger coming from here. It's pointing this way. How much is the fuel burning equipment burning the fuel? Not much, isn't it? Small, isn't it? But the activity is in first schedule. This is as the case may be. 
be. Therefore, this operation, the genset, conform to second schedule. For the emission and the fuel is conforming to second schedule as well. For the control of fuel quality, remember the sulfur content? This is scenario two. Let's take a look at another scenario. For example, textile industry, a go down like port facilities, fishery harbor, or canning of food. They are not listed under first schedule, but they use pasteurization unit, you know, heating using a large burner. They are not in the first schedule. So the emission from that food canning processes, sterilization, pasteurization, they go down from the hopper, powder type, raw mat that comes down. All these emissions are subscribing to fourth and fifth schedule. But they have huge, maybe burner, maybe boiler. Heat is used a lot and most of this heat would be coming from fuel burning or they may be coming from electrical burner then electrical is different thing not subscribing to this one then if it's electrical burner then you got to be very careful with the volatile organic carbon remember also regulated under fifth schedule okay but for this case they use a big burner boiler but the activity of this industry is not classified in the first schedule so look the emission from the genset exhaust or stack or chimney of the boiler or the oven or the burner whatever is subscribing to second schedule and the fuel quality is subscribing to second schedule so here please give a note to your procurement to ensure that they purchase fuel in compliance to what is stipulated under this law I believe this is clear let's go into the fourth scenario This is nice. Why is it nice? Because we don't fall under the first schedule. Do you think it's nice? You want me to discuss in an open video like this? Or you want to discuss with you? Look at the schedule. What do you see? You think it's easy? Listen carefully. You might not like to hear what I'm saying. I give you a tip. Get hold of your raw material SDS. Process, chronology, description, detail, technical description. Why? Because it's going to help you to do a mass balance. So the next thing is waste stream audit. You identify your waste stream from the incoming input of raw mass through every process. Identify how much in terms of quantity and how much in terms of flow. Or maybe you can just use mass balance technique, mass over time, how much per unit time is flowing through that process and then how much becomes intermediate waste and therefore how much becomes product and the difference of that input and output would be how much is being released into the air and when you know the raw man you should know the SDS the chemical formula chemical name once that is done then you know what to expect as releases from your process and then you can find the derivative chemicals used in your raw mat to do a baseline study in here and here i'm sorry uh, my studio spotlight dropped uh, make sure it is pointing towards me all right thank you very much that is my uh, studio crew helping me out it's actually my wife <laughs> thank you now with that raw mat, you know the SDS, then you know the chemical name of the materials which is involved, okay? So based on that, this is a very important thing for you to do. Baseline study of your emission. For this baseline study, for that process of yours, please refer to the SDS and let the chemist come up with all probable chemicals. Then the emission might be a broken down or radicals of those processes uh, releases this is where I need industrial chemists why we want to do this to identify what are the parameters related to fifth schedule that we subscribe or related to 
fourth schedule, do we have the dioxin and furan, dioxin-linked chemicals in our emission? That is how you do it. You got to do baseline study. I must admit, baseline study is not cheap, but do it once only and get the chemist to certify. And in that baseline study, we identify what are the parameters as listed in the fifth schedule F you to you. And that baseline study is a legible document because it is endorsed by a chartered chemist. Yeah, so that is the liability when we are not listed in the first schedule instead we fall under other industries so please remember you've got to check your permit all right now i hope uh, i have shared with you right up to this very end of the uh, google map of uh, clean air regulation thank you very much everybody say uh, sudahi dengan assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh